We are joined today by Dr. Swapan Das Gupta, Rajya Sabha Member of Parliament and a noted author. He is ready with his new book called Awakening Bharat Mata. I want to talk to you straight away about the title, Awakening Bharat Mata. You have gone back to the iconography of the days of yore. It's a deliberately, willfully provocative title. Mm -hmm. It's a very unfashionable title. Bharat Mata, as you can see in all political rallies and other sort of euphoric events, Bharat Mata Ki Jai is a uh, recurring slogan. So I wanted to say that. And where does it all stem from? Do you not see it problematic at all? Yes, there have been times, early, especially in uh, early nationalist iconography, where a beleaguered, a rather helpless Bharat Mata, trampled underfoot by colonialism, was recurrent. But today we have a figure, and in, the, in today's context, I think what we have is the image of a more resurgent, empowered Bharat Mata. But no, I'm not going into the whole issue of whether the nation should be idealized in the form of a woman or it should be something more abstract or whether there should be a nation at all. Right. Have you tried to problematize the idea of nationalism as well? In the sense that, uh, you know, how the word itself and the concept itself has undergone a, a great deal of change. Well, it was bound to be. The idea of nationalism particularly in the late 19th century and going right up to 1947, centered on the question of loss of sovereignty. Stemming from that fundamental question, they went into the question of what were the national weaknesses, what was needed to be done, etc. An entire political come social agenda grew out of that and nationalism was born out of that. Today, 70 years after independence, I think the question is very different. It is how does India aspire to be a factor in the world? Nationalism, yes, cannot be static. It has changed and that's the important thing and I try to trace that. One thing that has remained constant is this concept, this binary of us and them. So when it comes to sovereignty, you know, what were our national weaknesses? You know, why could we not resist the outsiders? So outsiders in the 19th century, the British, before that the Mughals. And then it just creates a sort of uh, communal binary as well that, okay, Mughals came and we could not resist them and after that, uh, uh, the British came and Hindus essentially could not resist even them. The uh, element of the outsider is always there in some respects, but it's not the only one. It, it would be foolish to deny that it exists, but it's really the larger question which is being posed is how do we evolve ourselves? How do we gain our corporate, uh, some, something which Bhandarkar and Ranade and others talked about. Social reform is a means of developing a corporate Hindu identity. And I thought, and I think they were talking about Hindu identity, not so much to be posited against Muslims, but because they felt that this was the principal identity of India. Do you think that initially RSS and uh, then the Bharatiya Janata Party, these two organizations, have they been able to corporatize the Hindu identity? Well, there is certainly a greater measure of a Hindu political identity today than was ever the case since independence. Can I, can I uh, make an interjection? Is this identity necessary in today's world where, uh, you know, in today's times where identity of any sort is kind of suspect? I don't see why identity of any sort is suspect, per se. I mean, there are different forms of identities which have been thrown up. What you have these various postmodern identities, etc. You have minority identities, you have... But there is, and one identity is not necessarily always exclusive. You know, identities are not sort of manufactured in a laboratory. Mm -hmm. They arise because there is a need felt for it. What was the need for the this need, Hindutva identity? The, the, the need for the Hindutva identity came about first because there was a feeling that India was losing its cultural personality. That India was evolving in a way 
in which our culture, our distinctiveness would be overwhelmed and lost by smaller identities. This was an issue which started emerging around the time of the, uh, uh, the war in Afghanistan in 1980, a wave of Islamic revivalism, which later transformed into Islamic radicalism. It was a res result of uh, the Khalistani movement. The need for it was felt because it was perceived, at least in political circles, that you are getting a formidable minority identity. Is de-radicalization the way forward or counter-radicalization? So oh, A is radicalized, so B also needs to get radicalized. Oh, it's, it's not a, uh, it's not a, uh, there are no easy answers to this particular question. What I would basically say is that there are trends within the Muslim community which haven't been born within India. They're global in character. And the roots of it may lie in theology, may lie in the particular uh, disputes of West Asia, Afghanistan, etc. There are various factors which have contributed to it. We have been confronted with this. But it is very important to recognize that this does constitute a threat in many ways to the integrity of India. Now, whether that threat should be countered by an extreme wave of secularized, secularized identity, which some people argue is, is the best way, whether it should be confronted purely by a military, come policing methods, or whether it should be confronted also with a political thing where the other, where, the, where Hindus too believe that they must unite and keep up a solid flanks in order to make sure and make others realize that we are not as vulnerable as they may be. And opposition to cow slaughter has always been central to the establishment of Indian nationalism, even after independence. So what we are seeing is nothing new. New. What we are seeing new is probably the vigilantism. Yes. That's the new newness of, the, of, the, of, the, of this thing. And that's a very undesirable aspect of the whole thing. But the idea of absolute food freedom, which is how it's, the alternative is often posited, has never been so ingrained in India. Right, so you talk about uh, the rise of vigilantism, but it is integral to this mobilization project. Because when you say that you are under threat, you are saying that our customs are under threat. You are, you are saying like, uh, um, uh, Golwalkar uh, and uh, Hedge uh, uh, were had said that uh, you know we go to the temples they like to desecrate them right so this again the binary is always at play so this I mean you do not send the genie back to the bottle once you have opened it Golwalkar and Hedge were more Golwalkar really <laughs> and to some extent Savarkar mm -hmm wrote in a particular context and that context was the recurrence of riots all over India. They wrote at a time when gradually the demand for Muslim separatism to create a separate Muslim nation was coming up and there was a context and a lot of the positions which they took was certainly quite extreme which probably explains why they never had the currency, they never enjoyed mass popularity but that doesn't mean that every point of view of theirs is necessarily going to be incorporated within the present day thinking. And I certainly think that has been the case, at least with both these in, in, in individuals. It's very significant, for example, that uh, in a very important series of three lectures with Mohan Bhagwat, the yes, present RSS yes. he didn't mention uh, Gulwalkar even once. He said that his ideas were obsolete now. And well, some of, in some effect, of those, he said that. Yes. Maybe he might not have used the word obsolete, Definitely. but yes. there was a context in yes. this thing. The main issues which we have to deal with is how do we deal with modernity, keeping in mind our inheritance. Now, that's a project, that's an ongoing project. I don't think we found answers to everything, but we have not eschewed modernity. Mm -hmm. 
BJP doesn't say that, you know, go back to, you know, the caves or something, you know, hutments or something like that. But the BJP they believe in going to the Mars and going to the, setting a space mission. No, but the BJP uh, leaders, they, they, they are also uh, coming up with fantastical ideas, uh, and including our Prime Minister, that the first... Uh, um, first example of uh, cosmetic surgery was I, I, I think, Ganesha. I think, I, think, I think that's not to be taken literally. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I, th I think we all know that, the, that there's a problem, especially when theology and literalism uh, converge. And it's stupid to believe that, you know, in Mahabharata there are nuclear weapons and all that. It's, 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 a, it's a good, it's nice science fiction. But the good gullible WhatsApp receiver... The people are not <laughs> necessarily gullible and if there are 10 gullible yeah. people, I don't think we should lower our discourse to uh, cater to only the gullible. You have quoted Manmohan Singh. We will have to devise innovative plans to ensure that minorities, particularly the Muslim minority, are empowered to share equitably the fruits of development. These must have the first claim on resources. And you said that this is problematic, this very idea is problematic. The, the term first claim, yes. that's precisely what I found. Yes. Not, not only me, a lot of people have found that problematic. Yes, problem. The idea that you create a separate class of citizens in mm. India on the strength of their religious identity, on their religious beliefs. It would be equally offensive if they'd say Hindus have the first claim. So my objection to that is that Manmohan Singh was practicing a form of political mobilization which precisely leads to that sort of counter mobilization which we have seen. But sir, um, is it not possible to see this as affirmative action because all the socio-economic indices would tell that the, the Muslim community taken, you know, taken in totality is far below on the socio-economic ladder. There is a historical context to that. It was precisely this form of affirmative action which was b b built into the communal electorates, which was one of the main res factors responsible for the mobilization which led to pa uh, Pakistan. Okay, so I believe that this trend towards the belief that somehow it's going, all going to end up into one Semitic hi Hindu religion is an exaggerated perception and doesn't take into account what the reality of India is and that Hindu, what we call Hindu, is not in that sense a religion of the book where there is no uniformity ever. I mean, in, I mean the Hindu, what we call the Hindu inheritance includes atheism for heaven's sake. Yes, it does, which is, which is what makes a lot of people quite uncomfortable that there is only one brand of this very uh, sort of militant sort of identity which is subsuming all other no, if you if you say, I mean, I, I, I've just been uh, after a very exhaustive and a, suddenly a very violent campaign in Bengal and uh, 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 where suddenly the Jai Shri Ram has suddenly become a very popular slogan, which it wasn't in, in, in earlier years, people, Bengali, the more Bhadralog Bengalis would say, oh, this is not really part of our inheritance. This is really, Jai Shri Ram is very much a cow belt, Hindi belt phenomena. Now, why has it come about? Is it a sudden expression of a rediscovery of Ram? No, it's not. It's actually a protest. It's a protest. Jai Shri Ram epitomizes. It's, it's basically a protest slogan against what they see as a certain bias and a tilt of the polity towards minorities. Now, that's one aspect of it. In the process, they're also asserting that yes, we are Hindus and we count as Hindus. This idea of identity being under threat, is it a deep-rooted idea? Do people necessarily feel it or is it a matter of political experience? Well, it's both. It's both. Let's be honest about it. It's 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 a bit, bit of both. It's not necessarily that it's always that the identity is under threat, but the need to assert your identity. So, what is there for people like you in this sort of reimagination and this evolving narrative? Well, mine is basically, you know, I think it was Margaret Thatcher who uh, uh, described a conservative as a liberal who's been mugged into reality. Uh, and I, and I always take heart from this. I mean, my, my upbringing in, in that sense is not very different. I still see myself as uh, liberal in certain respects in, social, in, in terms of social work. But that's not the issue, really. I, th I think the issue here is why should we expect 
Yes. That there should be a correlation between your political preference and your knowledge of the English language. I, I, I do not understand why that should necessarily be the case. And I, and I saw this sort of uh, cultural uh, disdain very much in evidence in various postings in Twitter and Facebook, especially after the results became, you know, I masses of votes. That sort of thing. Now, I, look, there is a long history, inheritance and tradition of conservatism in India. There is a long history of Hindu nationalism in India, which had had the blessings of people who were equally educated, who were equally fluent in English. I, I feel this is a sort of false binary. This is a false narrative. And it's and one of the purposes of this book is for a person of my background to actually say, look, I'm not a liberal. I am a conservative. I am a political Hindu. And I'm very proud of it. So you and uh, Dr. Shashi Tharoor happen to be on the same page. Different parties. Why? Are well, we were in the same class in the in in college together. Shashi would probably contest my going back into history in this sort of way, he would probably find the renaissance in Jawaharlal Nehru, which I wouldn't. I think that's a basic difference, but if there is a convergence of thought, I'm very willing to uh, grant it. I mean, we are not that dissimilar, despite our political differences. Prime Minister's speech right after the election results were out, it included the word, ki sabka saath, sabka vikas, sabka vishwas. Do you feel that this inclusion of Vishwas was an acknowledgement of sorts that some people in the past five years felt that they were they were not part of this this project and they felt that you know this is not our prime minister this is not our government because we have suffered. No, I don't think they've suffered, but I think there was an emotional detachment. Now, this is a fact. It's borne out by the electoral data, it's borne out by other, other, other things. Now you cannot have a situation where 15% or so of the population thinks, so we, you know, we are disengaged from the national move. It cannot be, so they, to incorporate them. But I think what is also important is, to, is, is for the Muslim community to realize, why do you want to disengage yourself? Why do you not want to have a conversation? You cannot think about India by excluding Muslims. They are part of our history. Yes, sir, but the point is, why would the Muslim community not feel disengaged when uh, you look at data points, you know, when it comes to uh, the incidents of mob lynching, you know, which are, which are communal in nature, they have risen in the past five years. Then the, the, the electoral representations of Muslims under the BJP government, that is abysmal. Electoral representation is done by the voters. It's not done by the BJP government. So if there are Muslim MPs who are getting elected or not getting elected, it's a matter entirely for the voters. Ticket, 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 no, I, I, th I think the more important question really arising, you're saying is that if Muslims feel aggrieved yeah. because of certain things. Mm -hmm. I think the most important thing to realize is there is a burden of history. And the most important thing is the vivisection of India in 1947. Look, you, it's, it's 70 years since it happened, but the wounds are still very much there. If Mr. Modi says, we have to take Sabke Saad, Sabke Vikas and Sabke Viswas, the faith, the belief, the confidence they have, I think it's positive, right? let's see.